I always look for characters um, and worlds. I think anytime you're a writer or a director, you're looking for something that has a lot of heart and soul that you can mine very deeply. Charles Roven, Richard Suckle, guys I've known for a very long time, had worked on this material with Eric Singer, and we'd been talking for years about different things to do, and we started looking at this, and I started to think, God, these characters are kind of amazing. And it had the... It's a chemical thing, I felt it immediately. I felt the chemical thing that I felt with the people of The Fighter or the people of Silver Linings. This was a case of another true story, American Hustle, that was based on events and people who just leapt off the page. The characters were just vivid, unlike any I'd ever seen before. Eric did an amazing job writing this very thrilling procedural and David, once he became involved, the driving force became the characters, and something that he knew that he could make his own and therefore make into a, quote, David Russell movie, unquote, uh, that pulled everybody in. In all the films that he's made, his films are about people and their search for something better. There is a reckoning that they have in their lives, and that's one of the things that I think will make David Russell films so singular and unique. David is one of the most gifted writers I've ever come across. And one of the reasons is because he really does inhabit every character that he writes about. These actors all committed to the movie before David had finished writing it. Uh, and in some cases, before David had even started writing it, just based on their conversations, on their trust in him, on their previous relationships with David. Okay. On the face of it, you have a, a, a pair of con artists who have been pinched by the FBI and forced to catch other criminals for the FBI, who then end up very quickly in deep water. And you also have a very volatile and unpredictable wife at home, a loose cannon in the middle of all of this. But what really interests me is personally the heart and soul of these people. I felt like we had a secret, just the two of us. You know, like that thing when you just want to be with the one person the whole time and you feel like the two of you understand something that nobody else gets. At the core of it to me, it was a love story. I love romance, and I think romance is very powerful. To me, that enchantment was everything. They're not just criminals trying to steal things. They're, they're people like anybody else who want to live the magic that anybody else wants to live. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. Should I take you there? Yes. You liked it? Mm -hmm. Right. Should I take you there twice? Stop. Bradley becomes the third part of this love triangle that I wanted to build the film around because I find love triangles to be very dynamic. And I wanted the stakes of the film to be as intense from an emotional standpoint and a personal standpoint as they were from the procedural standpoint. I wanted the whole movie to, to be about the personal. You're taking your wife out to dinner, your fucking wife. Did I just hear you correctly? That's the one thing you heard me say. I just find it rather shocking, that's all. I get to handle two wives with one dinner. All right, I take Rosalind out. She keeps her mouth shut. She sees that my work is legitimate. I get to keep my kid, and I get to keep that fucking wife happy. I really became interested when I first saw the, uh, pi a picture of Mel Weinberg, because he wasn't what I expected at all, you know? And uh, he just looked like a fascinating man, and, um, and uh, far more interesting than I'd imagined, not this sort of slick, wheeler dealer, not at all. You know, there was something very raw about him all the time. He wasn't necessarily in good shape, and he had this comb over that was rather elaborate. He had this air about him, and he had this confidence that drew me to him. So Christian Bale and I start to do our deep sea diving on what is the magic and music of this character. And it's all about the texture of this character. It's not just about what's going to happen to him, but it's about just who, just who he is. If he was in a cage at a zoo, what would it be like to look at him? And we're fascinated by how, he, how much he weighs, how he walks, how he talks, unlike any character Christian had ever played before. A man with a big comb over, I mean, a man who, with a big comb over, who had great charisma and confidence. Who starts a song like that? 
I'm not going to play it without trying to, you know, adopt his physicality, his body type. And David was going, really, you're doing that? And I was like, yes, I'm doing that. Absolutely, David, there's no question. He's like, all right, you don't have to go too far. But, you know, I ended up, you know, I mean, I was, I, was, I was over 40 pounds heavier than my normal weight, you know, by the end. He was who he was. He didn't care. There was something in the air about this guy, and we had to figure it out. That was exciting to me for every one of these characters. That's why I got very excited, because I knew I had a great character for every actor that they had never played, and the audience has never seen. He doesn't love you, Rosalind. He loves me, and you know it, and I know it, and he knows it. And it might be done now, but it was beautiful, and it was real. It was really overwhelming, the emotional scope of each character. When I first talked to David about the film, I mean, it was always about the struggle to survive and to see all of that um, communicated, but in a way that was, um, you know, very personal and raw. That is fucked up. I would never say anything that fucked up to anybody, but you do because you're gross inside. You're so fucked up and gross. Oh, I'm gross yeah. inside? Maybe you're gross inside, but robbing people and all that shit that you do, maybe we're both gross inside. That's what Irving loves about us. At least he's consistent. I found her struggle kind of really interesting. That concept of not wanting to be alone so much that you would rather be unhappy with somebody, because I think our ideas of what our lives should be sometimes overwhelm what our lives actually are. We're not happy. All right. You know that I could take Danny. You know that most of your work is illegal. And you know that if you tried to divorce me, you know that I'm not saying that I would, but I'm saying that I could. And I'm saying that that is why I don't like divorce, Irving. Women do that in divorces. Women get the children and then the fathers never see them. My mother never got divorced. My grandmother never got divorced. There are no divorces in my family. I am not getting a divorce. I want the women to be as strong as the male characters, and I want them to be very powerful presences. Um, I think the whole movie elevates to an extremely rich world when the women are, are strong, extremely strong, and extremely complicated. We're gonna wait until we decide to go for Laura Ritchie for real. Okay. That's when we fuck. Right, not till then, okay? Okay. Well, anytime you do a movie with David, um, I know that it's gonna be, it's gonna have to take me to places emotionally that, that aren't comfortable but are real and uh, he demands that you explore things in an organic way that, that you can't really think about. So I knew that like he wanted Richie in the movie to be this sort of unhinged, dangerous, uh, yet at the same time very vulnerable and childlike character. What do I do? I put my hand like this. Yeah. Oh. Do you fucking touch me. That bothers me. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah. That bothers you? Yes. You know, a lot of shit bothers me, too, but I was trying to help you. If I wanted to bother you, if I really wanted to fucking bother you, this is what I'd do. If I was trying to bother you, that's what I would do. To me, I sort of saw him as he's just basically the foil for this, but I wound up falling in love with the character, and he's actually as complicated as David said he was going to be. And of all the characters I've ever played, and maybe this is because of the curls, um, I had a hard time letting go of him. I really did love Richie DeMasso. It'd be a sign of disrespect to the sheik if the mayor didn't take it. It's for you, mayor. What are you doing? What, Carl, what the fuck? What is this? I'm gonna take care of it. Everything's good. I got everything under control. It's whoa, really whoa, whoa. Hey, hey. I spoke with senators and governors and even mayors just to see how that world works, what the shorthand of dialogue is, because it was a world that I'm so unfamiliar with. There's moral ambiguity in there, for sure. There's, you know, it's not black and white. It's, laws are black and white. People are not black and white. There's a lot of gray in there. Congressman, how you doing? It's Carmine. Tell me you're going to be in Trenton this week. We have an amazing investment opportunity I'd like to discuss with you. Everybody's trying to actually make themselves better. They're just doing it wrong, <laughs> you know? We get to sort of explore that, and they kind of do it wrong epically, and we get to see how their interactions with one another create this chaos. We are gonna need another move, trust me, and you're gonna be thanking me. The key to people is what they believe or what they want to believe. So I want to believe that we were real. We are real. And I want to believe that a man could want me. And I'm gonna take all of that heartbreak and all of that sorrow, and I am going to use it. And I'm going to make Richie think that I want him and that I like him. And I want to be very, very convincing. 
I mean, I've never played somebody who is so, you know, I've played a lot of layered characters, but this is the only one that like, you peel back a layer and it's like, there's another layer and then another, and then even then you have to approach it with no judgment. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Ah! We're all pretty transformative in the movie. Uh, by obligation. I mean, we're playing in the late 70s in a specific area of the country, the clothing, the hair, and, and none of that takes precedent over the emotional life, and that's the thing about David. So he's the perfect guy to make a period movie because he'll not get preoccupied with the aesthetic or the artifice, and all he really cares about is the heart. I so love the elegance of that era. The designers, Michael Wilkinson, Judy Becker, created a world that was beautiful but real. This could be one of the most beautiful pieces of film that I had the privilege of collaborating on. I think that there's a lushness to the way Linus shot the film with Jeff and Greg. There's so many worlds, that's what drew me to it. It was not just all the characters, but how many worlds it traversed. Aside from Three Kings, I'd say it's the biggest in scope visually of all his movies. We had a lot of locations, I think maybe 175, a huge amount. The use of textures and of materials was really important in the design and the decoration, and something I got very inspired by when I was researching the period. It was before AIDS, and it was after the sexual revolution, so it seems like this like perfect moment in history when people were having a lot of fun and going to Studio 54 and riding horses naked and all that stuff. We were coming out of a time of a more repressive attitude to sexuality, and by the time we get to 1978, I mean, all bets are off. <laughs> necklines and the punchy necklines. It, it forced me to create a certain amount of confidence because I couldn't be self-conscious. I'm not like the big provocative risk taker. So t to wear things that are so outside of my comfort zone and yet create a world for my character that it felt comfortable, it really did help inform the confidence of Sydney. Amy and Christian both had over 40 costumes each and the other characters had similar amounts. The hair and makeup team just like took it to a whole other level and it really helped the clothes, I think, to get that head to toe sense of the character. It didn't, didn't just stop at the neck. I love also the notion that Herb is this con man who's a consummate con man, but he's doing this thing with his hair as if any of us are conned by that. You know what I mean? It's this great contradiction that happens within people. David writes drama in such a wonderful way that it is never it's never one tone. All of his all of his drama, even his dramatic scenes, are exciting and funny and intriguing and interesting and confusing. And he just has this way of looking at the world and looking at people that when he expresses himself, it's a very exciting thing to watch because you never really know what you're going to get. None of his characters are really predictable, even if the story is predictable. The people aren't. And the wonderful thing too is, you know, you sort of see these characters as people that you're not like these crooks, this Irving Rosenfeld and Edith. But then he has this one great speech when he's talking about the biggest con artist of, his, artist of all was his wife, and that he did he couldn't hold a candle to her. We fight and we fuck, and that's what we do. That's our thing. She was the Picasso of passive aggressive come here. karate. Come here. Come she was better than any con artist I ever met, including myself. And she had me like nobody had me. Irving, come to mama. Come on. You might say she was my karma Just for how I took moment. advantage of people. Irving. Oh, my God. Come here. Come on. Get in the bed. All right. In everyday relationships, people are conning each other all the time emotionally. And I think that's the one thing that this movie can highlight is like, oh yeah, we've taken these sort of extreme characters in, the, in this time period when this thing occurred. But really it's about how humans deal with each other and use artifice and use tactics emotionally to get what they want and then the price they pay for doing that. Get out of my house. Go. Get out of our house. I don't want to. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. my fucking heart. I didn't mean for this to happen. The idea beyond just uh, conning or grifting to me, what's much more interesting is the way it's playing with the idea of identity and defining our lives. 
I like the humanness of what happens in those things, and I like the, the contradiction of those characters. Contradictions of characters, for me as a director, are the fertile ground that you can make the best stories and characters from, is the contradictions. The contradictions are fantastic, because, you know, life is in itself contradictory. Life will give you plenty of darkness to deal with, is my perspective. So I like seeing the people who have enchantment, they love life. Whether it's Carmine's life, or Rosalind's life, or Irving's, or Edith's, Richie's, they all have things they love about life, and that's important for me to communicate. I agree with George Lucas when he said, if you want me to feel something, if you want me to make you feel something, like a painful thing, that's not hard to do. I can wring a kitten's neck, and I'll make you feel really bad. What's hard is creating a world that triggers the imagination and the heart and creates enchantment and contradiction that, that's, that's human, that's hard. You know, and the magic of enchantment, that's not so easy to do.